word processing tools. Embedded in most word processing programs are rich tools teachers can use to create grade appropriate lessons, including levels of text to help all students access content. Learn how to check readability, format options, and organize text so every student can be successful. This is a screenshot out of Microsoft Word, and there's so many features, and you're probably just used to opening and, and typing and not kind of digging under the hood to see what resources are here. So that's exactly what we're going to do during this segment is maybe look at some things that you didn't even know existed. And a good place to start is under the Tools menu. There is a lot here, including um, spelling and grammar, and word count, uh, track changes can get very complicated, but it can be used in a very simple format, and we'll be showing some of that. Uh, lots of options, so I'm under the Tools menu. Now, word count. This happens to be one that I use all the time. When they say it has to be 100 words or less, mm, automate it. It's under word count and so you can go ahead and see exactly. This is really a good um, thing to share with students that this is here so then they can go ahead and um, if you ask for a paper that has so many words they know exactly how to to get there. Now autocorrect. You love autocorrect and you dislike autocorrect. It's kind of like on your phone when it's going ahead and answering things for you and like, no, that's not what I said. But a lot of people don't realize they can actually manipulate autocorrect. So for example, once, I know it's it's another thing to do, but once during the year, if you put in the correct spellings of your students' names, then when you're, do, you're typing or doing whatever, they don't keep underlining them as a, it's an incorrect spelling. So you can actually add to the the direct um, the dictionary that is uh, used when they do the spelling and grammar check. Okay, now there's a lot here. There's a lot of formatting options within a word processing document that you might not be taking advantage of. You might just be doing normal and bold and italics and underlining, but there's a lot built in that you can just go ahead and pick that already has um, different fonts, styles, underlines. They're all here under the styles. And so you can come in here, pick out what you want, you can modify them, you can do all different things. But this is a really quick, easy way to make your document look very professional with just a click of the button. Make it easy on yourself. If you do need to cite something, you can pick out whichever format that you want and you can go ahead and put your citations here and it will put it in the right format for you. Yay! Okay, reference tools. Now there's a whole bunch of things here, so let's just kind of start at the top and work down. First of all, I put in the word flipped because I was talking about flipped professional development. And the thesaurus had a couple of ideas. I'm not sure if I agree with those, but a couple of ideas. And here are some synonyms that go with that. And, and then you can go ahead and change your search and, and do it again. If you find a word, you can just go ahead and click on insert and that will automatically, wherever the word flipped was, it will now insert your new word. The dictionary, you can pick different um, languages for your dictionary. So if you're trying to translate a newsletter, for example, and you're trying to find a word in um, Spanish, you might be able to do that. But the other thing too is, this is new to me, the bilingual dictionary. I thought that was really interesting and I want to dig in and, and do that more. Be careful. You see right toward the bottom there, translation. Be careful. You cannot just take your whole word processing document. Let's say you just typed up your newsletter and you think, oh, I'll just translate it. Don't you, don't, this translate's not going to work. Neither is the Google Translate. You got to be really careful because these translating tools, although they're getting better, you don't want to offend a family and uh, send them something that is grammatically not correct or could be even offensive. And so just be careful with all the translating tools. You might be able to translate it, but have somebody that speaks that language check it before you would ever think about sending that home. Now, you have um, the web search I haven't used because I think I would just jump out to 
to the web, but it's built right in here, so that would be another option for you. Okay, this was new to me as I was really looking around. There's a lot of built-in things, and this is just the built-in cover pages. And I clicked on a couple just to see what they do, and it formats your text. It formats everything in a beautiful way, and you can change. You can see some of them have pictures. You can change the pictures, but it just takes that um, professional design look, and it, and it applies to your document. So it's a really, I thought, wow, where have I been? And so it's really a, a nice add-in feature. This is the table and contents, and wow, look at all your choices. They, it automatically, if you use those headings that I showed you earlier, it automatically knows to go through the document, find those headings, and then you pick out the format that you want. That's the automatic one. And I recently worked with that, and it was just so easy. I couldn't believe it. They've really, really improved this um, this feature. Then you can also do your manual table of contents. Not sure why you would want to do that, but you could. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is track changes. Now, track changes. If you and I were working on a document, I would type up the document. You'd send it to you go, no, I don't like this, this, this. But instead of you like typing an email, change third paragraph, blah, 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 you can turn on track changes, and then you can go ahead and put your comments right in there or suggestions for improvement. See, so in the upper left-hand corner, you see comments, and then kind of in the middle of it is um, when you go ahead and changes. Now, you can go ahead and accept or reject the changes. So when my editor sends back my book chapter and it's all marked up, I can accept, accept it. No, that's what I meant. And I can, I can not, I can decline that. But when it, we're all done and we're all finished with the editing of that chapter, we can go ahead and it merges all the changes, takes away all of the, the marks that we've done, and it makes it into a final document. Now, before I go on, one thing, when we are working with students that struggle with text. One of the easy, easy things we can do in a word processing document is break up the text, putting more white space between uh, paragraphs, between sentences. Also, uh, increasing the font is a, is a very easy, quick way to help students work with um, a variety of text. So when we're thinking about how we meet their needs, that is a very simple way that you can do it. Also, in the home there is highlighting. You might want to actually go in and highlight for students that need it. So you have the same piece of text for all your students, but you might chunk it differently or highlight keywords or things like that. So there's a lot of options when you're in a word processing document. Here are you, on the left, this I didn't know, you have all different types of table of contents. So you can go ahead and pick um, what you like, how many levels, alignment, all that other stuff. So I actually did learn a lot. I think I, I was scared when I clicked on table of authorities. I still don't quite know what that is, but I'll, I'm just going to leave it and move on. Now, spelling and grammar. You know you've spell checked, you know the grammar check and the squiggly lines and all that stuff, but you can go in and do a whole lot of customizing within spelling and grammar. And one of those I'd really like to draw your attention to in the grammar section is show readability statistics. Click on that. One time, you've got to turn it on. So whatever, uh, on the piece of software, you have to turn it on one time, and then it does stay on for future um, reference. So click readability, and look what you get when you do that. Now, reading teachers do not scream out loud. We know that this is just an estimate when you talk about the reading level. It is completely an estimate. It's not, um, you'd have to do a full analysis, but it is a good way to help students maybe write at a higher level. Let's see if we can get that up a little bit more. Um, and that, that one really works with students. Look, I'm writing at the 12th grade level. I do believe 12 is the highest, I believe. Um, but I am famous for passive sentences. So I actually, I really use this when I'm doing a lot of heavy formal writing to try to improve my passive sentences. And then 
sentences per paragraph, how sophisticated are, you know, so on and so forth, depending on the writing style. And so I just thought this is something a lot of people do not know it's there because you actually have to turn it on. Then from that moment forward, every time you do a spell check, grammar check, this will appear. So you, you only have to turn it on that one time and then you'll have all this data just delivered to you. So those are just a few of the things that we can use within word processing to help students struggle with text. Um, there's a lot more features that we could hit, but I just wanted to highlight a very few that will help you. Thanks!